The question is, a particle is stuck to a disc at a distance r by 2 from the center. Disc has initial angular velocity omega naught is equal to 6 j radian per second and constant angular acceleration alpha is equal to minus j radian per second square as shown in the figure. If the radius of the disc is 1 meter, find the speed of the particle after t is equal to 2 seconds. All right, so we have a disc, a particle is stuck at this point at a distance r by 2 from the center. It has an initial angular velocity 6j. That means 6 is the magnitude and j is the direction. And it also has alpha which is minus j, which means 1 is the magnitude and minus j is the direction of angular acceleration. Okay, we have to find the speed of the particle after 2 seconds. So any particle in circular motion, how do we find the speed? Finding the speed is very simple. It's simply omega times r, the distance from the axis. So this r we already know. This will be half of this quantity, obviously. So all we need to find out is what will be the angular velocity at the end of two seconds. That's all we need to do. Okay, so if we have a look at all the things that have been given to us, so omega naught is 6j and alpha is minus j, all right, with appropriate units, of course. Okay, and the time given to us is after 2 seconds. So I require omega at the end of 2 seconds, okay. So I have omega naught, I have alpha, I have time. What I need is omega. Which equation should I use? Not very difficult. It has to be omega is equal to omega naught plus alpha t. Simple. Now let's substitute what is omega? Omega is 6 plus alpha. Now notice that omega naught and alpha are in the opposite direction, right? So if I'm taking omega as positive, then alpha I'll have to take it as negative. Hence, I will substitute minus 1 and that multiplied by the time. So this comes out to be 4 radian per second, right? This is the angular velocity of the disk after 2 seconds, okay? So what will be the speed of the particle? It will be omega times r. What is omega 4? And what is the distance from the center? Half of the radius, which is half meter. So this will come out to be 2 meter per second. And that is going to be my answer. Let's have a look at the options. Option D obviously is going to be my right option. All right, another simple question. Let's move forward. So the question is, a force F is equal to I minus J plus K acts at point P. Find the torque due to the force about point O. So force F is acting at point P, whose coordinates are 2, 3, minus 5. But we have to find out the torque about point O, whose coordinates are minus 1, 1, minus 2. All right. What do we know about torque? We know this very well. The torque is equal to R cross F. And we already know what is F. F is my I minus J plus K Newton. Okay. So my job is to find out R. Now what is R? R is the vector which joins the point about which the torque has to be calculated to the point at which the force is being applied. So I can say that this vector OP is going to be my R vector. Okay. Now the question is how do we find R vector? Not at all. Let's say I want to represent point P. I want to write its position vector. Okay, so if the coordinates are 2, 3, minus 5, can I write its position vector to be 2i plus 3j minus 5k? Of course I can. Similarly, can I write the position vector of point O as minus i plus j minus 2k? I can do that. So vector r is nothing but OP vector. Okay, which means I can find vector r by subtracting O vector from P vector. So let's do that. And this is going to give me 3i plus 2j minus 3k. Okay, so I have found out r. I have found out f. Now all I have to do is take a cross product. So I'm going to use the determinant method to take the cross product. So i, j, k. And then position vector, we have it as 3, 2, minus 3. Those are the coefficients. And for force, we have the coefficients 1, minus 1 and 1. 
So I'm going to write that over here. Now we are going to solve it using the determinant method. All right, so I'm taking I, so this row and this column needs to be hidden. So I'll be left with two minus, minus one into minus three. And that is going to be three, okay? Then I'm going to change the sign and then I'm going to write minus J and then I'm hiding this column and this row. So this is going to give me three times one minus one times minus three, which will become minus three. All right, and then lastly, I will write K and then I'm hiding this column and this row. So this is going to give me three times minus one, which is minus three, minus one times two, which is two. All right, uh, writing all this together, I'm going to get minus I, and then I'm going to get minus six J. So minus I minus six J and then minus five K. And that should be my answer. All right. So a straightforward application of R cross F and using the determinant method to solve the cross product. Have a look at the options. So option D is going to be the correct option. So the question is, a solid cone hangs from a frictionless pivot at the origin O as shown in the figure. If I, J, K are unit vectors and A and B are positive constants, determine the torque generated about the origin by a force F is equal to A, J, Newton, applied to the rim of the cone at a point P minus B, zero minus C. All right, a lot of information, but it's very, very simple if you look at the diagram. First of all, the force is acting in the J direction. Perfect, very nice. But where is the force acting? The force acting is at minus B, zero minus C. Okay, so I come C distance down in the negative Z direction. All right, and then I go B distance in the negative X direction. So where will I reach? I'm going to reach over here because B is the radius of the disc. Uh, I, I mean, uh, B is the radius of the cone. Perfect. So this is the point of application of force. We need to find out the torque. How do we find out the torque? Extremely simple. Torque is R cross F. So we already know what is F. All we need to find out is what is R. Okay. What is R going to be? The coordinates of the point is minus B, zero, minus C. So simply the R vector will become minus B, I cap, minus C, K cap. All right, there is no J component or Y component. So J is not going to appear. Okay, so I have to take a cross product with F, which is simply A, J. All right, so all the things, scalar things, I'm going to keep that aside so i am going to take minus a and keep that aside because these are scalar quantities multiplied to a vector and then i will have b i cap plus c k cap and i have to cross this with a j cap or let's call this j cap only okay so this becomes minus a now i cross j is going to give me k so this is going to become b k and K cross I or K cross J is going to give me minus I. So this will become minus C I. So what am I left with? I'm left with minus or I should say I am left with A C I cap minus A B K cap. And that should be my answer. Pretty straightforward question. All right, let's have a look at the options. So the correct option is going to be option C. So the question is, a ball of mass 2 kg is projected at an angle 45 degree with initial velocity 10 meter per second as shown in the figure. Find the torque acting on the particle due to gravity about origin at its maximum height. All right, so a particle is thrown with some velocity and at some angle, so no surprises, it is going to be a perfect parabolic trajectory. So we have to find the torque of the weight, which will be mg in the downward direction at the highest point, but about which point? About this point of projection. All right, so how do we find torque? Torque is simply R cross F. 
So we know what is F. So we can write F as mg and what will be the direction? It will be minus j cap. Perfect. What would be the coordinates of this point? So if the particle is at highest point, then it would have gone half the range in the horizontal direction and height, maximum height in the vertical direction. Okay, so we can find r by 2, we can find h and we can express the r vector in that form and then we can take r cross f. Okay, sounds like a lot of work for this simple question, doesn't it? Absolutely, because there is a much simpler method. Okay, what is that method? How do we find torque by a different method? That method is simply extend the line of action of force. Okay, that's what I've done. And then drop a perpendicular from the point about which the torque has to be calculated. So the magnitude of torque will then be given by simply F times R perpendicular. Once that is figured out, finding out the direction is not difficult at all and we will see. Okay, so let's first find that out. So F is mg, right? That is the force. What is R perpendicular? Look at this. What is R perpendicular? R perpendicular, R perpendicular is nothing but half the range. Okay, so let's quickly find out the range. What is range? It's u square sine 2 theta upon g. And what do we need to find out? Half of that. Okay, so let's substitute. So 10 square becomes 10 times 10. Theta is 45 degrees. So sine 90 degree will become 1 divided by g. So I have 10 meter as the range. But what is r perpendicular? Half of that. So simply 5. Is that correct? Okay, so what will be the magnitude? Mass is 2, g is 10 into 5. And this is going to give me... 100 Newton meter, but that is just the magnitude we have figured out. What about the direction? Not difficult at all. So suppose we have to find out torque about O and the force is acting like this. Correct. So how is it going to rotate? Okay, how is what what will be the direction of the torque? The direction of the torque as we see from the top is going to be clockwise. Okay, if it is clockwise, we can curl our fingers in the clockwise direction. And then the thumb gives, gives us the direction of the actual vector. So if this is clockwise, then the vector is going into the plane of the board, which means it will be minus k. All right. So my correct answer with the sign is going to be minus 100 k cap Newton meter. All right, this is an alternate method and a much simpler method to calculate torque. So we should keep this in mind as well. All right, let's have a look at the options. So option C is going to be the correct option. So the question is, for a force F acting on rigid body, statement one, component of torque about any point lying on the axis along the axis is defined as torque about that axis. And statement two is torque about an axis is same as torque about any point lying on the axis. So we have to say if statement one is correct, two is correct, both are correct or both are wrong. Okay, very, very conceptual question. So pay close attention. So consider a body which is lying in the xy plane. So this body I'm talking about. And let's say there is a force F acting at this particular point on the body. Now this force F is Q to the z axis, meaning that if this is the z axis, the force is something like this. So they are neither parallel nor they are intersecting. So these are called skew lines. So force is acting in this manner. Now we have to consider the torque about any point lying on the axis. So we have chosen an arbitrary point O, which is lying on the axis. So if I have to calculate the torque about this axis, then I have to join it with R vector, which is the vector joining the point about which the torque has to be calculated to the point of application of force. So if now I find R cross F, I will found, find the torque about the point O. So let's first make the plane which contains R and F. So if I do an R cross F, then the torque vector is going to be perpendicular to this particular plane which contains R and F. All right, so it is going to be something like this. So this will be the torque and it is going to be perpendicular to this particular plane. All right. So now this torque is going to have 
some angle with the z-axis. Okay, so we can take a component of torque which is parallel to the z-axis and we can take a component which is perpendicular to the z-axis. Now, the component of torque which is parallel to the z-axis is defined as the torque about the z-axis. Alright, so statement 1 is certainly true. That is the way torque is defined about an axis. Alright, now let's look at statement 2. Statement 2 says that the torque about any point on the axis and torque about the axis are the same. Alright, is it so? Let's see. This is the torque about any point on the axis and this is the torque about the axis. Do they look same? Obviously not because there is another component over here. So statement 2 is certainly wrong. Alright, so what would be my correct answer? Statement 1 is correct and statement 2 is incorrect. Hence, my correct option is obviously going to be option A.